Hello, and welcome to my video series of algorithms. This is part 6 of module 4, where we focus on greedy algorithms. In this video, we will prove the correctness of the greedy algorithms for solving the minimum spanning tree problem. Recall the minimum spanning tree problem, or the MST problem. We are given a connected, undirected graph with weighted edges, where all weights are non-negative. The objective is to find a subset of edges that connects all nodes in the graph while minimizing the total weight. The MST problem can be solved using several greedy algorithms. In the previous videos, we discussed Prim's algorithm, Kruskal's algorithm, and the reverse delete algorithm. Prim's algorithm aims to reach a new node with the lowest possible cost. Kruskal's algorithm includes the cheapest edge, provided that it does not form a cycle. The reverse delete algorithm removes the heaviest edge, provided that it does not disconnect the graph. Each of these algorithms seeks to incorporate the cheapest edge while adhering to specific constraints. While it is intuitive to associate selecting the cheapest edge with the goal of constructing the minimum spanning tree, it is not immediately clear whether these resulting greedy algorithms are correct. In other words, all greedy algorithms make decisions about which edges to select without considering the entire graph. Given that the MST is defined based on the entire graph, the question arises whether such a global optimum can be achieved by choosing local minimum edges. This concern is also present in Dijkstra's algorithm for solving the shortest path problem. In this video, we will prove that these algorithms are indeed correct and can construct MST using local minimum edges. We will prove the correctness of Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm together, as many steps in their proofs are similar. Afterward, we will focus on proving the correctness of the reverse delete algorithm. We will begin with proving an important property called the cup property. Given the graph G, where all edges have distinct weights, define S as a non-empty subset of nodes and U as the remaining nodes. The cup property states that for an edge E, if it has the minimum weight among all edges with one end in S and the other end in U, then E must be included in every MST of the graph. Note that this property is a general graph property and is not associated with any specific algorithm. While the condition that all edges have distinct weights may seem very strict, we will take it for now and then relax it later. For example, consider the graph shown on the left, where all edges are boundary crossing because they have one end in S and the other end in U. If the red edge has the minimum weight among all boundary crossing edges, the cup property indicates that it must be included in every MST of the graph. We will prove the cup property using proof by contradiction. We will assume that the minimum edge is not included in MST, and show that this leads to a contradiction. Suppose the MST T does not contain the minimum edge UV. Since T is the MST that connects all nodes in the graph, the nodes U and V must also be connected through T. Since the edge UV is not part of T, U and V must be connected by another path. For example, the green path. Because U is in S and V is in U, this path must contain at least one boundary crossing edge, such as X, Y. In this case, X is in S and Y is in U. Now, let's try to construct another edge set, T prime. Our goal is to show that T prime is spanning tree with a lower weight than t, which will serve as the contradiction needed to prove the cup property. Specifically, 
we construct T prime by replacing xy with uv in T. To achieve the goal, we need to prove three facts. First, T prime has a lower total weight than T. Second, T prime connects all nodes. And third, T prime does not contain any cycle. It's easy to see that T prime has a lower weight than T. This is because UV is the minimum cost boundary crossing edge. So it must have a lower weight than XY. Note that we can claim T prime has a strictly lower weight than T due to the assumption that all edges have distinct weights. Second, to show that T prime still connects all nodes, Note that the only possible disconnection is between x and y, since t prime no longer contains the edge x y. However, t prime can connect x and y using the path x u v y, which is highlighted in red in the figure. This path exists because u and x are connected in t, and all the connecting edges are retained in t prime. Similarly, y and v are also connected. And we have included the edge uv in t prime. Hence, the path exists to connect x and y, and t prime can still connect all nodes in g. Third, to show that t prime does not contain any cycle, note that u and v were connected by a unique path in t. For example, the green path. The path is unique because T is MST and does not contain any cycle. Recall that the only edge we have added in T prime is UV. Hence, the cycle can only be formed between U and V. However, the only path connecting U and V in T has been broken by removing the edge XY in T prime. As a result, no other path can connect U and V except for the edge UV. Therefore, T prime does not contain any cycle. Taken together, we have shown that if MST T does not contain the minimum cost boundary crossing edge UV, we can construct another spanning tree that has an even lower weight. This contradicts with the fact that T is MST. Therefore, every MST must contain the minimum cost boundary crossing edge. This completes the proof for the cup property. Now, with the cup property, we can prove the correctness of Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. For Prim's algorithm, its procedure aligns precisely with the conditions specified in the cup property. Specifically, the set S corresponds to the visited nodes in Prim's algorithm, and the set U corresponds to the unvisited nodes. Thus, Prim's algorithm only includes edges that are part of every MST. Additionally, Prim's algorithm terminates only when all nodes are connected, meaning that it has included enough edges to form a spanning tree. Together, Prim's algorithm is correct. For Kruskal's algorithm, recall that it iteratively recruits the cheapest edge as long as it does not form any cycle. If adding an edge between two nodes does not form a cycle, it means that the two nodes were previously disconnected. In this case, we can place one node in S and the other node in U. Thus, the recruited edge becomes the cheapest boundary crossing edge satisfying the conditions required by the cut property. We can formalize the proof for Kruskal's algorithm as follows. Let uv be the edge selected by Kruskal's algorithm. Since adding uv does not form a cycle, u and v must be disconnected before adding the edge. Define s as all nodes that connect to u. In this case, V must not be in S and must be in U. Since UV is also the minimum, 
it becomes the minimum cost boundary crossing edge that must be included in every MST by the cut property. Additionally, Cruise Code's algorithm terminates after considering all edges. Ensuring that it has included enough edges to connect the entire graph. Therefore, Cruise Code's algorithm correctly identifies the MST. Next, let's prove the correctness of the reverse delete algorithm. Recall that this algorithm iteratively removes the heaviest edge from the graph if it does not disconnect the graph. In this case, it is challenging to directly apply the cut property to the proof. Instead, we will use the opposite of the cut property. Specifically, assume that all edges have distinct weights, and let C be a cycle in G. If UV is the most expensive edge in C, it must not belong to any MST. For example, in the green cycle shown in the left figure, if the edge UV is the most expensive edge in the cycle, it must not belong to any MST. Similar to the proof of the cut property, we will use proof by contradiction here. Assume that UV is contained in the MST T. We will construct T prime by first removing UV from T. Since T is MST, removing UV will disconnect U and V. To complete the construction of T prime, we need to find an edge to reconnect U and V. Define the set S as all nodes that remain connected to U after the removal of UV, and the set U as the rest of the nodes. Since U and V are disconnected, after the removal of UV. U must be in the set S, and V must be in the set U. In the original graph, we know there exists a cycle C that includes U and V. Thus, after removing UV, there must be another path connecting U and V. Let it be the green broken curve in the left figure. In this case, the path must contain a boundary crossing edge xy, where x is in s and y is in u. We will add xy to complete the construction of t prime. In other words, we replace uv in t with xy to construct t prime. Like before, we also need to show that t prime is a cheaper spanning tree. First. The weight of T prime is strictly less than the weight of T because UV is the most expensive edge in the cycle C. We can claim that it is strictly less because we have assumed all edges have distinct weights. We will also show that T prime can still connect U and V, the only possible disconnection caused by removing the edge UV. This is made possible by the addition of the edge XY. Know that all nodes in S are connected in T, and similarly for all nodes in U. Since the removal of edge UV does not affect the connections within S and within U, they remain connected in T prime. In this case, we have U and X are connected in T prime, same for Y and V. With the addition of the edge XY, we can construct the path u, x, y, v to connect u and v, as shown by the green path. Third, we show that adding x, y will not create any cycle in t prime. This is because x was in s and y was in u before the inclusion of x, y. In other words, x and y were disconnected. Therefore, Adding the edge xy will not create any cycle. Taken together, we know that t prime is a spanning tree with a lower cost than t. This contradicts with the fact that t is an MST. Therefore, uv must not belong to any MST. 
With the opposite of the cut property, we can prove the correctness of the reverse delete algorithm. From the procedure of the reverse delete algorithm, we know that it only removes edges that do not belong to any MST. Since the algorithm considers all edges and ensures that the graph remains connected upon termination, it must have and only have removed all edges that do not belong to any MST. Therefore, the algorithm is correct. Finally, let's relax the constraint that all edges must have distinct weights. If we are given a graph with some edges having equal weights, we can perturb the edge weights with a small possible quantity, epsilon. After the perturbation, the graph will have all edges with distinct weights. For example, let G be the original graph with three edges having the same weight of 1. We can perturb their weights by adding small quantities like 0 0.000001 and ensure all edges in the resulting graph G' prime have distinct weights. Now, we can run one of the greedy algorithms on G' prime and obtain the correct MST T'. Prime. Also, let an MST of G be T, which exists but is not known yet. To show that T prime is also an MST for the original graph G, we define the following notations. Let E be the non-zero minimum weight difference between any pair of edges in G. For example, in the graph given here, we have E equals 2.6 minus 2.5, or 0 0.1. If E is undefined, it means all edges in G have the same weight. In this case, any spanning tree is an MST, so as T prime. Therefore, we will only discuss the case where E is defined. Then note P as the total amount of perturbation added. For example, here P equals 0 0.000006. Know that we can always make epsilon arbitrarily small, such that p is less than e. Finally, define wgt as the weight of t when evaluated using the weights in g. Similarly, we define wgt prime, wg prime t, and wg prime t prime. If T prime and T contain the same set of edges, then T prime is MST of G. The only concern is if T prime contains some different edges than T, and that the weight of T prime is larger than T when evaluated in the original graph G. We will show that the above scenario cannot occur. Assume that it happens. By definition, we have WGT less than WGT prime. If the weights of T prime and T are different, their difference must be larger than or equal to the smallest non-zero edge weight difference, or E. In this case, we have WGT prime minus WGT larger than or equal to E. Since we can make P less than E, we can further reduce the above inequality to WGT prime minus WGT is larger than P, or P plus WGT is larger than WGT prime. Meanwhile, since all perturbations are positive, the weight of T prime when evaluated in the modified graph G prime must be larger than or equal to its weight when evaluated in the original graph G. In other words, we have WG prime T prime is larger than or equal to WG T prime. Lastly, for T, we know its weight can be inflated by at most P when evaluated in the modified graph G prime, when all perturbed edges are included in T.
Hence, we have W G prime T minus W G T is less than or equal to P, or P plus W G T is larger than or equal to W G prime T. Combining the above three in equations, we have W G prime T prime is larger than W G prime T. The corresponding inequations are colored the same to make it easier to see how they are combined. You can pause here to go over the math. Given that W G prime T prime is larger than W G prime T, it implies that T prime is not an MST in the modified graph G prime. This contradicts with the correctness of the greedy algorithms in graphs without equal edge weights. Therefore, we know that T prime cannot have a higher weight than T even when evaluated in the original graph G. It means that although running the greedy algorithms on the perturbed graph may result in a spanning tree with different sets of edges, any such tree must be an MST of the original graph. In other words, running any of the three greedy algorithms on the perturbed graph will give us the correct MST for the original graph. In summary, we have proven the correctness of Prim's algorithm, Kruskal's algorithm, and the reverse D algorithm. We use the cup property to prove the correctness of Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. We used the opposite of the cup property to prove the correctness of the reverse delete algorithm. We also demonstrated how to relax the constraint that requires all edges to have distinct weights. This video completes our discussion of the MST problem. Thank you for watching and see you next time.